I'm going to briefly discuss impedance and the simple harmonic oscillator. Uh, I want to show you how we derive the formula for the impedance, um, and that should give you some idea of why we use it. So we're going to start with the standard solution, psi, which is equal to AE to the I omega t plus phi. Um, notice that this is a damped driven harmonic oscillator, so A is going to be a function of the frequency and various other system parameters, and the omega here is the driving frequency. Um, if we differentiate this, well, we get a, a psi dot, um, and that's just equal to I omega psi. And we can differentiate again and get psi double dot, um, which is equal to minus omega squared psi. If you're not clear on that, then you should remember that when you differentiate the exponential with respect to time, you bring down a factor of I omega every time, and remember that I squared is minus 1. Now we can substitute this into the standard driven harmonic oscillator equation. Um, so on the left hand side we end up with m psi double dot, which gives us a minus m omega squared psi. Um, and that's then going to equal, on the left hand side, minus s psi, the standard response term, minus i b omega psi. Um, that's the drag term. I'll just reach the edge there, so I'm going to continue around. Plus um, f naught cos omega t, which is the standard driving term. Now we can rearrange. Um, we'll put an f naught omega cos omega t on the left, um, and we see that that's equal to i v omega plus s minus m omega squared, um, and then there's a psi on the outside. Okay, so we now have um, an expression for the driving force. Um, from this point onwards, I'm going to drop the cos omega t because it's just an oscillation. I'm not interested in it, but I'll keep everything else. Um, in particular, I'm going to keep um, the complex numbers in the expression on the right-hand side because they give us interesting information about phase differences. Now, we introduced, um, possibly with slightly dubious notation, the idea of an impedance, z of omega, being f naught um, divided by psi dot. Um, in the lectures I used bars on the psi dot, but actually those aren't necessary, um, and you'll see why in a moment. So when we do that, using the equation just we've just derived above, um, we see that on the left-hand side we get the f naught over psi dot we were expecting, um, and on the right-hand side we get the following. We get b, because the we are using psi dot equals i omega psi, so that gives us b and the i and the omega cancel, um, plus s over i omega minus m omega over i, and then we get a, a psi over psi, which of course we can set equal to 1, um, and then that simplifies down into b minus um, i into s over omega. Sorry, that's gone wrong. Let me just um, rewrite that. I'm going to take the, I'm going to make that a plus sign, um, bring the m term to the front. So let me try that again. That's going to be b plus um, m omega, and then i of course outside the front there, plus i into m omega minus s over omega, um, which is the formula I gave you in the lectures. Um, and I hope you now see where we got the um, complex numbers from. Of course, we could, if we wanted to, rewrite this in terms of a, an amplitude for the impedance um, and a phase difference. Um, that would be a perfectly reasonable way to do it. This way, I think, is possibly the simplest, um, and I hope this brief derivation has shown you exactly how we get to that form.